Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you a lesson about how to do dragonflies and we're going to do a watercolor and indie ink combination that gives the appearance of a stained glass. So first off, all we need at the beginning is a pencil and eraser um, and we're going to get started first with the circle. So we have a 9 by 12 piece of paper and I like to use Canson. Um, it comes in a blue pad and it comes in 9 by 12 so you don't have to do any cutting and it has a really nice surface that is good for painting or drawing or anything. We want a circle that takes up kind of the majority of the center of our picture. So we know we have it 9 by 12. So I have my 9 by 12 paper taped to another piece of paper and my tape is halfway onto my page and halfway off. That will give us a nice crisp border later. I want to look at the side and see if I can find about the middle. Now I don't mind guessing it saves me time and I figure if I'm on vacation someday and I'm at the beach and I've got a pencil and an eraser and a pad of paper, I don't also want to be carrying around a ruler. So I'm just going to guess what the middle is so that's close enough. And then I'm going to go maybe a finger widths in so I've laid my finger right there and I'm going to put a number one there and a finger widths in a number one there. So I know that that's going to create a nice space to the left and right of my circle that I can do this fun sun shape that we're going to do later that will give us an opportunity to have more color. So that's how wide my circle is going to be. Now you know the difference between a circle and an oval is that a circle is the same distance all the way around. And most of us are not naturally good at just starting out and drawing a circle. So I'm going to show you a trick and I like to show you a trick in every lesson that we do that will help you with even projects that we're not working on right now. So this is going to help you do a dragonfly picture, but it will also help you know how to do circles in the future. So I've taken a piece of scrap paper, the printer didn't print it properly, and it was in the recycling. And so I'm going to use this piece of scrap paper to help me draw a circle. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to put it right next to my line. And when I find the other line, I'm going to fold it. All right. So this is exactly the width of the distance between this line and that line. So that's how wide we want our circle to be. It's not a magic trick. Um, it would be fun if I did magic tricks, but that's a different person, I think, for these videos. So I'm going to take this and now it is the same width as our circle. So I'm going to fold it again because that's half the width of our circle. So when I put it on there, I'm going to lay it here and I'm just going to put a tiny dot right in between. So that is the center of our circle. That means that if I take this and go at this angle and put a little mark and then I go straight up and put a little mark and go straight down and put a little mark. And then I can keep doing that just like the arms on a clock as it goes around. It's going to be making for us kind of a dotted line to help us with our circle. Now you decide how many of these you need. Some of you, you might be gifted artists and you might only need one here, one there, one there, and, and you can make a circle instead of a square. But I kind of like to have a few more than that because that will be a really good dotted line to draw my circle. So let's do that. Now that you have the number of dots around the center that you feel comfortable with, let's gently sketch to connect the dots and create our circle. When you were drawing your dots, maybe you got excited and scooted it around. So you could have a few outliers. Those are spots that make your circle look bumpy. Just erase any guys that stick out farther. And that'll help your circle be more circly. We're now gonna get started on our dragonfly's wings. And remember our piece of paper that we used to find the center of our circle and measure for a circle? 
we're gonna use that same scrap piece of paper to help us with the width of our dragonfly's wings. And to do the dragonfly's wings, we're going to put letter X's on our page. We're gonna do three dragonflies uh, because the rules of composition are our odd numbers are cool. So we want odd numbers. So we're gonna have an odd number of dragonflies. We're gonna put three letter X's for the center of the wingspan on the dragonfly. So I'm gonna use this piece of paper. So this was folded to be the center. I want my dragonfly wings to be a bit longer than the radius of the circle. Now you know a good science word too. Radius is from the dot to the outside. Diameter is the whole way across. So I want my dragonfly wings to be a little bit longer. So this is the middle and I'm just gonna fold it a little bit longer than the middle. So that'll be the width of my dragonfly's wings. Use that as a straight edge. I want my X to be centered, so you know how to find the middle now. We're gonna fold this. That will create the middle. So, a little dot there. And then I'll open it back up and create a letter X. Let's do three of those X's. Notice that my X's are not open really wide. They look like tall, skinny letter X's. That's important because now we're gonna put the bodies of the dragonflies in. And so I'm gonna use my straight edge. I'm not gonna measure this time. I just know that the bodies are a little shorter than the wingspan. So I'm gonna kind of center it so that the X is like the top of a letter T. I'm gonna place my paper there and I'm gonna put part of the line sticking out the front and then the line sticking out the bottom. And I'm gonna do that on all three. Coincidentally, none of my lines are crossing over each other yet. It probably will happen eventually, so don't be concerned about that. If yours already crosses, that's okay. And so now we have the general structure or framework for our dragonflies. We're gonna get started on our dragonflies' bodies. Before I make an abstract design like this, I like to know what the real thing looks like. That's actually the definition of abstract, that you look at something and you kind of gather the essence of it. And so I took some time to Google dragonflies and looked at them and now I'm ready to make an abstract dragonfly. So first off, we're gonna start with the body, the abdomen of the dragonfly. We want that to happen at the spot where the wings intersect. So I'm gonna put kind of an oblong oval shape. Imagine stringing a bead on a wire right there. So our center line is like the wire that we're gonna string the beads on. Then for the rest of the body, let's use circles. Circle, circle, circle. And at the end of the body, let's use a W. And for the head, we're gonna put another larger circle. And then we'll use backwards parentheses for the eyes and a little curve for the mandible. So that would be our abstract bodies for our dragonflies. Let's do that all three times. Before we move on, let's erase some of the x-ray vision that we can see in our drawing so far. Notice that the insides of the bodies have been erased out, and now it's time to learn how to draw the wings. As I make my wings, I want them to curve back and down and join at the body. Back, down, and join at the body. It's all right that this line is over overlapping, because the dragonfly has two sets of wings. But 
have the bottom wing come back to that oval shape too. This dragonfly is similar, but going in a different direction. So I have to start here, out, down, back to the body. This might go off the page a bit, out, down, back to the body. And the second one, out, down, back to the body, out, down, back to the body. With this method, the wings got a little bit more length on them, by having this curve out here, so that's a good thing. It's a little trickier drawing upside down, so you can either draw upside down or you can rotate your whole page. I don't mind drawing upside down, so I'm gonna go ahead and go out, up, and back to the body, out, up, back to the body, out, up, back to the body. And this one is gonna overlap the other one's tail. Okay, we now have the three dragonflies drawn, and I want to try to get the sun shape in the background. To draw the radiating background, we want to start with a compass design. So think about north, south, east, and west. So those are the first four lines that you would draw. Now, instead of drawing a line in the corner, we're gonna use the space a little bit differently. So we're gonna start by putting a line next to the lines that we've drawn. And then another line that kind of cuts those in half. The space that's left gets cut in half. So notice that the line doesn't necessarily go to the corner of the paper to be equidistant. So next we will be erasing the circle out of the wings but do not erase the wings out of the wing. Now that we've drawn and erased any x-ray vision we're ready to do the inking. I'm going to use this waterproof India ink and it's good to find like a disposable lid from around the house because this stains really easily. It's pretty permanent and I have a nice little palette dish, but I don't want it to get stained by this black paint. And then any brush that comes to a good point, um, I like using about a size six or a size eight because it holds it in there, but you are welcome to use a smaller brush if you have one and you would rather trace with that because this is what we're gonna do to outline our whole picture that we made. Also, I'm gonna move it to a flat surface because I don't want gravity to drip and run. So I'll be moving this to a table surface to trace. And if you don't have any India ink, it is possible for you to use just a black permanent marker, maybe a Sharpie fine point. Um, I like this better because it has a painterly effect. I like the brush strokes and everything. And plus we're gonna do a trick where we dilute it and make gray in a moment to do some different design work. So you can't do that with a Sharpie. Uh, but feel free, because if you don't have this, I would rather you use a Sharpie than nothing at all. Okay, let's get started tracing. Notice how very little ink I had to squirt in the edge of this lid. And I'll just get a little on my brush. And I like to pull the ink on. If you push, it gets wide. But if you pull, you can keep a nice, smooth line. And for me, I have more control from the muscles of my arm than in the little motions of my fingers. So if I try to do it with my fingers, I might get a jerky line, but I can use my whole arm to pull and I'll be able to get a smoother line. And instead of doing a whole circle or oval at once, I like to do two curvy parts. So right side, left side. I get better results dividing it that way so that the brush can be pulling the whole way. And then for the tail, I'm going to have the top ones be able to hold color and the bottom ones to be dark. So I'll just go ahead and use the ink that's already on my brush to fill those bottom ones in. 
I'm also going to fill in the eye parts here. And when we looked at our photograph of uh, the dragonfly, we noticed that they have kind of a dark tone at the corners of the wings. So I'm just going to add a dark tone there for a little extra detail in our abstract design. Notice that when I traced, I missed my line. Oh well, I kind of wish I'd gotten on the line, but since I didn't, it makes more sense to erase the pencil now because the ink is permanent, and I'm sure it'll look fine. So I'm going to do that mark there, and then we'll continue tracing the rest of our picture with ink. Keep in mind that you can rotate your picture like this so that you're not always tracing where your hand could lay on something. It's probably best to have it in a way that you don't have to rest your hand on anything that's already been inked because you can smear this. Um, so you can keep rotating and when you pull the ink, it's going to go better for you than if you try to go sideways. So The other thing that you can try is to hold your paintbrush almost straight up in the air and then just let the bristles bend slightly. This is kind of how they use brushes to do some calligraphy. Um, so it's also a good way to have good control to get on these curvy lines. But even so, don't try to do the whole circle at once. Do half of it and then the other half. Now that we've traced the whole picture, all the lines that we want to save, and colored anything black that we want to color black, I'd like to teach you about how we can dilute the India ink to create a nice gray color that we can use to do some decorations. So first we want to wash our brush pretty good. You'd be surprised how much ink can be in your brush. And then I'm going to use my paintbrush to kind of carry water over. So see how I can pick it up and drop it, I'll drop it right in that lid on that edge there. So I want enough water that I can dilute some of the ink that I have here. Nice little puddle there. It's a good idea to test and see what you've got. So I've got my scrap paper from before. That's pretty light. Maybe I'll drag a little more over there. Oops, I think I got too much. Nope, we're good. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Let's see, get it. What happens if it's all in there? Because I didn't have so much to begin with, I think I'm gonna be okay. If you have a lot of ink, it would take a lot more water than that to gray it up. Uh, but I think I'm okay now. So I'm gonna use this gray to create some different patterns and designs in the picture that we're going to do. So one of the things that I'm going to do is pick alternating sides to do some radiating lines. So you can pick any one that you want. I'm going to start with this one and some gray radiating lines. All right, I think I might need a little more water. What I'm going to do, because I know it is diluted already, is take a paper towel and I'm going to lay it on top. I'm careful not to scoot it so that I can pick some up there. That looks nice and gray. So because I don't want to have to lay paper towel on it the whole time, I'm going to add some more water to it to get it lighter. And I'm going to dry my brush off before I continue. So I'm only picking up a little bit. So let's see how if I'm successful here. I'm going to add a little more, just a little paint. And I'm going to skip that one. Oh yes, this is the color I'm going for. And I'm going to kind of wiggle them this time to make them a little more interesting. Last time I went kind of straight, this time I'm going to go with more wiggles. I used an alternating pattern for the sun rays, and now I'm going to use some curves on these dragonfly wings. So I just want to go this direction on this side, and this direction on that side. So see, they're kind of like parentheses and they will overlap a little bit. Now that I have the wings, I want to put a design in my circle area. I'm calling it a sun because 
that's the name of this kind of shape. I don't actually intend for this to be the actual sun, it's just a design element that I'm including. So I'm going to use a little bit of this gray and my brush kind of it up to put some like S shapes, random squiggles to keep that from being empty. So like lower clicks ease, kind of circles. And I'm picking up my brush so that it's not a continuous shape. It's kind of random and curly. Now I'm finished with my inking and I want to make sure that this is completely dry before we put any watercolor on whatsoever. So this is a good time to go get a drink of water, do some laps around the house, and then in a little while we'll come back and we'll erase any pencil lines that are sticking out and get started with the painting. Now that the ink is dry, we've erased all the pencil lines that were sticking out. So remember this wing that I was off? Now I have erased that pencil line and you can't even tell at all. We can begin painting. With watercolors, they are translucent, meaning that you can see through them and light can go through them. I always like to start with the lightest color. Yellow is the lightest color, so we will start with it. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and then put a pretty good amount of water here and rub it around on this area. And then I'm gonna take this yellow paint and I'm gonna put it on the sun design. So I can do solidly here on top of that India ink. And because it's permanent, it won't come back to life and start making things all gray and black again. It'll stay put while I paint over it. On the rays, I'm gonna paint them solidly and notice how I have to add water again. Um, I don't want this to get too sticky. If this gets dry over here in the paint, it will be too sticky, so I wanna keep adding some water to keep that flowing and evenly colored. In the center area, I think I'm gonna try not to color it solidly with yellow. So I'm gonna try kind of the swirly technique, like with the gray that we did so that some parts can be yellow, some parts can be gray, and some parts can be white. In watercolor painting, if you want something white, it really is best just to leave the white paper showing. That's because watercolors traditionally are supposed to be transparent or translucent. So if you get a watercolor set and it has white paint in it, it's probably not watercolors, it's probably tempera or gouache. Because gouache is an opaque, meaning that light can't shine through it. The next color that's a little bit darker than yellow, but still pretty light, is the orange. So I'm gonna add some water to the orange. And I'm going to start off by making this entire dragonfly the orange color. I'm also going to choose a space in the background to be orange, and I'm going to choose the one that's the farthest away from that dragonfly, so up here. That's a little sticky, so I'm going to add a little more water to get that to flow a little better. I'm gonna continue with the rainbow order now, so I'm gonna move on to red, and I'm gonna do this dragonfly with the red. And I'm gonna choose two background spaces to go with the red. So I'm gonna choose the one pretty opposite over here. And I'm gonna choose this one that's close to the orange. I'm gonna leave the rainbow order now. Instead of doing purple, because I want that to be a layering color, I'm gonna move on to blue. Now, because we've used India ink, we have a nice thick boundary between the red paint, the yellow paint, and where the blue is gonna go. That's pretty important because when watercolor touches other wet watercolor, it can spread. So if we're cautious and we don't cross over that blue ink will be okay painting this dragonfly right next to that wet red paint. I'm going to choose two spaces in the background to put blue. 
I'm going to go with this one right over here. And I'm going to choose the one up near the red dragonfly. I plan to use purple and green and some more red to do layers upon the dragonflies. So it's important that the first layer of paint is still pretty dry to the touch. So the orange one is pretty dry and the red is pretty dry. The blue is still quite wet, so we won't be doing that layer yet. So let's start with the red layer on top of the orange dragonfly. Notice how I'm using just the tippy toe of the paintbrush so I can get those designs and textures. And I'm re-wetting the paint so it won't be too sticky. Sticky gives you the illusion that you're in control, but then it never really dries nicely. It stays sticky. So you want that transparent design. I'm going to use the purple as the design work on the red dragonfly and I'm going to paint two of the spaces with purple. These two. While we were doing the other areas, the blue had a chance to dry, so now we can do the green. and the remaining space in our colorful background. Here's the painting all finished and all dry, so now we can remove the tape. I'm gonna pull the tape low and at a right angle away from the artwork. See how it makes a capital letter L on the side that I'm pulling? You want to make sure it has that right angle direction all the way up this side. Thank you for joining me in this Dragonfly Watercolor India Ink project. I had a lot of fun doing it with you and I hope that you save your pictures so that you can show me if you have an Arlington Heights library card, you can sign up for a meetup time and we can Zoom talk about the artwork that you've done. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye.